In computer science, a thread of execution is the smallest sequence of programmed instructions that can be managed independently by a scheduler. The implementation of threads and processes differs from one operating system to another, but in most cases, a thread is a component of a process. Multiple threads can exist within the same process and share resources such as memory, while different processes do not share these resources. In particular, the threads of a process share the latter's instructions and its context. On a single processor, multi-threading is generally implemented by time division multiplexing, the processor switches between different threads. This context switching generally happens frequently enough that the user perceives the threads or tasks as running at the same time. On a multiprocessor or multi-core system, threads can be truly concurrent, with every processor or core executing a separate thread simultaneously. Many modern operating systems directly support both time-sliced and multiprocessor threading with a process scheduler. The kernel of an operating system allows programmers to manipulate threads via the system call interface. Some implementations are called a kernel thread, whereas a lightweight process is a specific type of kernel thread that shares the same state and information. Programs can have user space threads when threading with timers, signals, or other methods to interrupt their own execution, performing a sort of ad hoc time slicing. How threads differ from processes Threads differ from traditional multitasking operating system processes in that, processes are typically independent, while threads exist as subsets of a process. Processes carry considerably more state information than threads, whereas multiple threads within a process share process state as well as memory and other resources. Processes have separate address spaces, whereas threads share their address space. Processes interact only through system-provided inter-process communication mechanisms, context switching between threads in the same process is typically faster than context switching between processes. Systems such as Windows NT and OS 2 are said to have cheap threads and expensive processes. In other operating systems there is not so great a difference except the cost of address space switch which implies a TLB flush. Multi-threading Multithreading is mainly found in multitasking operating systems. Multithreading is a widespread programming and execution model that allows multiple threads to exist within the context of a single process. These threads share the process's resources, but are able to execute independently. The threaded programming model provides developers with a useful abstraction of concurrent execution. Multithreading can also be applied to a single process to enable parallel execution on a multiprocessing system. This advantage of a multithreaded program allows it to operate faster on computer systems that have multiple or multi-core CPUs, or across a cluster of machines, because the threads of the program naturally lend themselves to truly concurrent execution. In such cases, the programmer must be careful to avoid race conditions and other non-intuitive behaviors. In order for data to be correctly manipulated, threads will often need to rendezvous in time in order to process the data in the correct order. Threads may also require mutually exclusive operations in order to prevent common data from being simultaneously modified or read while in the process of being modified. Careless use of such primitives can lead to deadlocks. Another use of multi-threading, applicable even for single CPU systems, is the ability for an application to remain responsive to input. In a single threaded program, if the main execution thread blocks on a long running task, the entire application can appear to freeze. By moving such long running tasks to a worker thread that runs concurrently with the main execution thread, it is possible for the application to remain responsive to user input while executing tasks in the background. On the other hand, in most cases multithreading is not the only way to keep a program responsive, with non-blocking I.O. and or Unix signals being available for gaining similar results. Operating systems schedule threads in one of two ways, preemptive multitasking is generally considered the superior approach, as it allows the operating system to determine when a context switch should occur. The disadvantage of preemptive multithreading is that the system may make a context switch at an inappropriate time causing lock convoy, priority inversion or other negative effects, which may be avoided by cooperative multi-threading. Cooperative multi-threading, on the other hand, 
relies on the threads themselves to relinquish control once they are at a stopping point. This can create problems if a thread is waiting for a resource to become available. Threads, called tasks, made an early appearance in OS-360 multiprogramming with a variable number of tasks in 1967. Until the late 1990s, CPUs in desktop computers did not have much support for multi-threading, although threads were still used on such computers because switching between threads was generally still quicker than full process context switches. Processes in embedded systems, which have higher requirements for real-time behaviors, might support multi-threading by decreasing the thread switch time, perhaps by allocating a dedicated register file for each thread instead of saving restoring a common register file. In the late 1990s, the idea of executing instructions from multiple threads simultaneously, known as simultaneous multi-threading, had reached desktops with Intel's Pentium 4 processor, under the name hyper-threading. It has been dropped from Intel Core and Core 2 architectures, but later was reinstated in the Core i7 architectures and some Core i3 and Core i5 CPUs. Although threads seem to be a small step from sequential computation, in fact, they represent a huge step. They discard the most essential and appealing properties of sequential computation, understandability, predictability, and determinism. Threads, as a model of computation, are wildly non-deterministic, and the job of the programmer becomes one of pruning that non-determinism. A Euro the problem with threads, Edward A. Lee, UC Berkeley, 2006. Processes, kernel threads, user threads, and fibers. A process is a heavyweight unit of kernel scheduling. Processes own resources allocated by the operating system. Resources include memory, file handles, sockets, device handles, and windows. Processes do not share address spaces or file resources except through explicit methods such as inheriting file handles or shared memory segments, or mapping the same file in a shared way. Processes are typically preemptively multitasked. A kernel thread is a lightweight unit of kernel scheduling. At least one kernel thread exists within each process. If multiple kernel threads can exist within a process, then they share the same memory and file resources. Kernel threads are preemptively multitasked if the operating system's process scheduler is preemptive. Kernel threads do not own resources except for a stack, a copy of the registers including the program counter, and thread local storage. The kernel can assign one thread to each logical core in the system, and can swap out threads that get blocked. However, kernel threads take much longer than user threads to be swapped. Threads are sometimes implemented in user space libraries, thus called user threads. The kernel is unaware of them, so they are managed and scheduled in user space. Some implementations base their user threads on top of several kernel threads, to benefit from multiprocessor machines. In this article the term thread defaults to referring to kernel threads. User threads as implemented by virtual machines are also called green threads. User threads are generally fast to create and manage, but cannot take advantage of multi-threading or multi-processing and get blocked if all of their associated kernel threads get blocked even if there are some user threads that are ready to run. Fibers are an even lighter unit of scheduling which are cooperatively scheduled. A running fiber must explicitly yield to allow another fiber to run which makes their implementation much easier than kernel or user threads. A fiber can be scheduled to run in any thread in the same process. This permits applications to gain performance improvements by managing scheduling themselves, instead of relying on the kernel scheduler. Parallel programming environments such as OpenMP typically implement their tasks through fibers. Closely related to fibers are coroutines with the distinction being that coroutines are a language-level construct, while fibers are a system-level construct. Thread and fiber issues, concurrency and data structures, threads in the same process share the same address space. This allows concurrently running code to couple tightly and conveniently exchange data without the overhead or complexity of an IPC. When shared between threads, however, even simple data structures become prone to race conditions if they require more than one CPU instruction to update, 
two threads may end up attempting to update the data structure at the same time and find it unexpectedly changing underfoot. Bugs caused by race conditions can be very difficult to reproduce and isolate. To prevent this, threading APIs offer synchronization primitives such as mutexes to lock data structures against concurrent access. On uniprocessor systems, a thread running into a locked mutex must sleep and hence trigger a context switch. On multiprocessor systems, the thread may instead pull the mutex in a spin lock. Both of these may sap performance and force processors in SMP systems to contend for the memory bus, especially if the granularity of the locking is fine. I.O. and scheduling, user thread or fiber implementations are typically entirely in user space. As a result, context switching between user threads or fibers within the same process is extremely efficient because it does not require any interaction with the kernel at all. A context switch can be performed by locally saving the CPU registers used by the currently executing user thread or fiber and then loading the registers required by the user thread or fiber to be executed. Since scheduling occurs in user space, the scheduling policy can be more easily tailored to the requirements of the program's workload. However, the use of blocking system calls in user threads or fibers can be problematic. If a user thread or a fiber performs a system call that blocks, the other user threads and fibers in the process are unable to run until the system call returns. A typical example of this problem is when performing I.O., most programs are written to perform I.O. synchronously. When an I.O. operation is initiated, a system call is made, and does not return until the I.O. operation has been completed. In the intervening period, the entire process is blocked by the kernel and cannot run which starves other user threads and fibers in the same process from executing. A common solution to this problem is providing an I.O. API that implements a synchronous interface by using non-blocking I.O. internally, and scheduling another user thread or fiber while the I.O. operation is in progress. Similar solutions can be provided for other blocking system calls. Alternatively, the program can be written to avoid the use of synchronous I.O. or other blocking system calls. Sun OS 4X implemented lightweight processes, or LWPs. NetBSD 2X Plus and Dragonfly BSD implement LWPs as kernel threads. Sun OS 5.2 through Sun OS 5.8, as well as NetBSD 2 to NetBSD 4, implemented a two level model, multiplexing one or more user level threads on each kernel thread. Sun OS 5.9 and later, as well as NetBSD 5 eliminated user thread support, returning to a 1 1 model. 1. FreeBSD 5 implemented M and model. FreeBSD 6 supported both 1 1 and M. N. User could choose which one should be used with a given program using labmapconf. Starting with FreeBSD 7, the 1 1 became the default. FreeBSD 8 no longer supports the M and model. The use of kernel threads simplifies user code by moving some of the most complex aspects of threading into the kernel. The program does not need to schedule threads or explicitly yield a processor. User code can be written in a familiar procedural style, including calls to blocking APIs, without starving other threads. However, kernel threading may force a context switch between threads at any time and thus expose race hazards and concurrency bugs that would otherwise lie latent. On SMP systems, this is further exacerbated because kernel threads may literally execute on separate processes in parallel. Models, 1-1, threads created by the user are in 1-1 correspondence with schedulable entities in the kernel. This is the simplest possible threading implementation. Win32 used this approach from the start. On Linux, the usual C library implements this approach. The same approach is used by Solaris, NetBSD and FreeBSD, N, 1, and N, 1 model implies that all application level threads map to a single kernel level scheduled entity. The kernel has no knowledge of the application threads. With this approach, context switching can be done very quickly and, in addition, it can be implemented even on simple kernels which do not support threading. One of the major drawbacks however is that it cannot benefit from the hardware acceleration on multi-threaded processors or multi-processor computers, 
there is never more than one thread being scheduled at the same time. For example, if one of the threads needs to execute an I.O. request, the whole process is blocked and the threading advantage cannot be utilized. The GNU Portable Threads uses user-level threading, as does state threads, M, N, M, and map some M number of application threads onto some N number of kernel entities, or virtual processes. This is a compromise between kernel-level and user-level threading. In general, M, N threading systems are more complex to implement than either kernel or user threads, because changes to both kernel and user space code are required. In the M, N implementation, the threading library is responsible for scheduling user threads on the available schedulable entities. This makes context switching of threads very fast, as it avoids system calls. However, this increases complexity and the likelihood of priority inversion, as well as suboptimal scheduling without extensive coordination between the user land scheduler and the kernel scheduler. Hybrid implementation examples Scheduler activations used by the NetBSD native POSIX threads library implementation, Marcel from the PM2 project. The OS for the Tira Cray MTA, Microsoft Windows 7, the Haskell compiler GHC uses lightweight threads which are scheduled on operating system threads. Fiber implementation examples, fibers can be implemented without operating system support although some operating systems or libraries provide explicit support for them. Win32 supplies a fiber API, Ruby as green threads, Netscape Portable Runtime, RIBS2, programming language support, IBM Place I, F, included support for multi-threading in the late 1960s, and this was continued in the optimizing compiler and later versions. The IBM Enterprise Place I compiler introduced a new model thread API. Neither version was part of the PLI standard. Many programming languages support threading in some capacity. Many implementations of C and C++ provide support for threading on their own, but also provide access to the native threading APIs provided by the operating system. Some higher-level programming languages such as Java, Python, and .NET expose threading to the developer while abstracting the platform-specific differences in threading implementations in the runtime. A number of other programming languages also try to abstract the concept of concurrency and threading from the developer altogether. Some languages are designed for parallelism. A few interpreted programming languages such as Ruby and Python support threading, but have a limitation that is known as a global interpreter lock. The GIL is a mutual exclusion lock held by the interpreter that can prevent the interpreter from concurrently interpreting the application's code on two or more threads at the same time, which effectively limits the concurrency on multiple core systems. Other interpreted programming languages such as TCL avoid the GIL limitation by using an apartment model where data and code must be explicitly shared between threads. In TCL each thread is at one or more interpreters. Event-driven programming hardware description languages such as Verilog have a different threading model that supports extremely large numbers of threads. See also Notes References External links Answers to frequently asked questions for comp programming threads What makes multi-threaded programming hard? Article query by Slice, Parallel Execute, and Join, a thread pool pattern in Java by Binalders CA Article The Free Lunch is Over, A Fundamental Turn Toward Concurrency in Software by Herb Sutter, Article The Problem with Threads by Edward Lee, Concepts of Multi-Threading, Contest, A Tool for Testing Multi-Threaded Java Applications by IBM, Debugging and Optimizing Multi-Threaded OpenMP Programs, Multi-Threading at DMOZ, Multi-Threading in the Solaris Operating Environment, POSIX Threads Explained by Daniel Robbins, The C10K Problem.